This video reviews the post-orthokeratology analysis that you can perform with your MedMont topographer. First, start by selecting your best baseline map, ideally a composite topography. We're going to compare every visit from here until the end of time in OrthoK against that baseline map. And that's one of the many reasons why we want a good quality baseline topography. Next, we're going to hold down the control key and select our best post-treatment topography. Now that we have our baseline and our post-treatment, ideally with good corneal coverage, smooth contours, now we're going to go up to View and Compare. And this brings up the comparison map, also known as the difference or subtracted map. And this is one of the most valuable tools to any orthokeratologist. It provides you with a very clear understanding of the topographical changes following OrthoK. With the comparison map selected, now we see our baseline map in the top left, our post-treatment map in the bottom left, and on the right, our subtraction. And this is comparing the thousands of data points here from here to explain how the eye has changed. Wherever you see blue, you flatten the cornea out. Wherever you see red, you steepen the cornea between those two visits. Let's go up to display and ensure that we have an axial power map selected. Remember that axial provides us an understanding of visual indicators we could click our cursor on the center and see this patient has near to a 2 diopter Rx change. We have 1.96 diopters change between this topography and this topography on the visual axis. Generally, there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the change in apical corneal power and the refractive change. So post-orthokeratology, you won't need to do a refraction because your topography will tell you. Next, we could look at the blue treatment zone in relationship with the pupil. Look at this blue-green border all the way around. Where is that blue treatment zone in relationship to the pupil here? And we could say that the centration of our effect appears slightly temporal, but for the most part, it's very well centered. Another consideration is we could look at the power change across the treatment zone. Notice on the graph we're missing some of the information. Our scale is a little bit tighter than the effect. In other words, we've created more refractive change than our scale is actually showing. So let's go to this button and alter it and increase it up to a 3 diopter plus or minus power shift. And now we can see on the graph 100% of our effect is within the graph. We can understand where the peak of effect is, where the lowest point of effect is. Another thing that we could do is look at the potential for myopia controlling effect. And here we see in the center we're creating approximately two diopters of refractive change. Notice as you move away from center you have less and less Rx change. You're creating more and more plus as you move toward the pupil border, this dark gray area. And this is important in myopia control because we're trying to increase the plus power into the pupil. We said that the axial map will help us to understand vision and visual cues. We can now switch to the tangential to understand eye shape. And the tangential map highlights this red ring, which is created by the reservoir of fluid that surrounds the back surface of your orthokeratology lens. Of course, this is where your green band of fluorescein is underneath your ortho-K lens. It's creating the suction force that's pulling on the epithelium. Now by that position of the red ring in relationship to the pupil, we can see our lens is slightly temporally displaced, maybe ever so slightly inferior. We could also look at the blue ring, and that's the alignment zone of the lens touching itself down on the cornea. And that also gives us an understanding of the position of the lens in the closed eye environment. So our tangential map is telling us about lens position. 
we focus on the red ring and the blue ring to determine where does that lens find its equilibrium in that closed eye environment. Whereas we'll use the axial map to appreciate the refractive change, the treatment zone position, the treatment zone size, and our likely myopia controlling effect within the pupil. If you have questions about how the subtractive map works in orthokeratology, please contact your MedMont distributor.